You're watching TVC Breakfast. Now, parts of Nigeria have begun witnessing uh, increased flooding this September, confirming earlier warnings from Nigeria Hydrological Service. Now, destroying all within its path, the floods have left many homeless and in their need of humanitarian assistance. Affected states have now started to put measures in place to mitigate against further devastation. Now, with flooding being a perennial issue in Nigeria, why do we still find ourselves in this situation every time? That's a question Nigerians are asking uh, and they continue to ask every day. Joining me in the studio is the Managing Director, CEO at uh, Mark Press West Africa Limited, Nigeria, uh, Ido Salau. It's nice to have you join me Thank this you. morning. Thank you. I remember we've discussed this not once, not twice, and we keep talking about it. But the point is, there is no amount of talk that will be adequate because uh, we keep using this platform to uh, draw government's attention, especially with your expertise and all of that. Now, talk to us about this warning by hydrological agency that always goes out every year, but we still have this challenge and, and, and so on. Maybe we should go to historical uh, background okay. of flooding activities in Nigeria. All right. The first flooding, devastating flooding, happened in 1948 in Ibadan. Wow. Yes. In Nigeria? In Nigeria. And from there, 1963, 78, in the 80s, the famous Ogunpa. Mm -hmm. And that was when... We read about that. Yeah, about 50,000 lives were lost in the Ogunpa saga. Now, f to Lagos. Lagos started experiencing flooding in the 70s. So from that 70s to now, we've had about 300,000 lives lost. And I want to give you ex another example of effect of flooding. Not only losing life, bridges, uh, infrastructure, houses, farmland, businesses. houses. Mm -hmm. So if we look at that alone, we now ask what happened to those who are supposed to be responsible for mitigating this effect. Is it lack of capacity or is lack of interest? What would you say? Both. All right. If I say lack of capacity, we know the economic situation of the state and Nigeria at large. Most of them we say we don't have money. The, that's in terms of capacity. Mm. In terms of interest, yes, I'll say political will. I give you an example. In the 80s, when the Ogun Passage happened, the government of the day came up with an idea of supporting states that are affected with flooding. Mm. And that's when they put an infrastructure uh, 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 mitigation plan in place for Ogun River when it overflowed its land mm. using the ecological fund. So in the last five, six years, I don't know what happened to a credit fund. They've, they've stopped from giving uh, uh, infrastructure support to state. Now they just give a kind of palliative support in terms of uh, 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 the flood victim. Mm. The one that happened in Bauchi of recent, the governor just went there. What did he say? He said, uh, we have gotten support from federal government. 800 million will be released from a credit fund. Is that enough? Is that so so it's, it's not about the monetary uh, aspect of things only. All of us, we are, we are supposed to be uh, at a lot. One, the agency, I give credit to the NIMAS and the agency that are responsible for giving warning. They've warned us. Mm. And if you look at the last month, August, there's what we call Ojoda. August means when the, the, the rain will we, we stop for a while. Then the last one now, because the one we experienced last is referred to as flash flood hmm. and urban flooding. Hmm. The one that is coming now, most of the water reservoir that are holding this water, the excess water will be released because if they don't release, they will break the dams. Hmm. So that is another one that is coming next. And that's why the warning is now, those people now living at the bank of the river now have to start evacuating because what we are now going to have is river flooding and ocean flooding. Combined. Combined. Wow.
Okay. Uh, we hope the authorities certainly, but, but there's so much to talk about. It's just that we don't have all the time right now, but uh, <laughs> you have sent the warning here as well. The, <laughs> the ocean and also the riverbanks and all of that mixing together. Thank you very much, Do Salau, for your insight into this. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Thanks for staying with us on TVC Breakfast. Now, behind the cameras, a lot of things happen, and <laughs> it's a program by itself. <laughs> but that is exclusive to us, I must tell you. Yeah. Exclusive. All right. Thanks for staying with us. Now, parts of Nigeria have begun witnessing increased flooding this September, confirming earlier warnings from Nigeria Hydrological Service. Destroying all within its path, the floods have left many homeless and in dire need of humanitarian assistance. And affected states now have now started to put measures in place to mitigate against further devastation. With flooding being a perennial issue in Nigeria, why do we still have or find ourselves in this situation every time after every warning? These are some of the issues we are looking at right now. The MD CEO at uh, Mark Press West Africa Limited, Nigeria, Ido Salau, is here. Is here with us in the studio, excuse me. Now, it's good to have you join us. Now, the point there is, if we look at uh, every year when we have those warnings, warnings, uh, you know, ahead of the beginning of uh, the season, a lot of people say individuals are supposed to, there's a role they are, they are supposed to play, the government has a role to play, and then even experts like you also have roles to play. But how do these work together in synergy to ensure that uh, that thing is have lots of lives and uh, Yes, uh, we, you know, when we look at flooding, mm. it's one of the natural disasters. And we are what we call disaster management for flooding. Yeah. So disaster management phases of flooding is into four phases. We have the preventing phase, we have the response phase, we have the mitigating phase, and the other one. So those phases are what we need to now discuss, okay. the response and the mitigating uh, uh, phase. phase. Mm. Now, the agency that are responsible for these phases, we have them. Federal Ministry of Environment, they have to put infrastructure, State Ministry of Environment, local government, the citizenry have to obey and listen to the cry or uh, the warning mm. coming from the government. The area of uh, warning is being given by NIMED. And NIMED will give you a warning that, and that's what they've been doing. Now we should be expecting more rain and these are coming from river and coastal flooding this time. And we're lucky in this part of the climb that we don't have the one that's called the, the tsunami of the water. Mm. You know, where the uh, underground water we erupt and it will push water into. And look at what is happening in the uh, in US over the weekend. Exactly. Yeah. So those are other disasters that can bring out flooding. So because we are not prepared in the area of mitigating this, preventing this, that is where we now need to do. In fact, I used to ask, why is it that every year we keep uh, talking about flooding? When the right people, what they're supposed to do is to carry out post-impact assessment study of what of the impact of flood last year mm. or, or in the previous, previous year, year mm. and so that we use that to prepare ourselves. But are those, are those uh, assessments carried out really? Well, I had this same question in 2012. Okay. That After that all major the states, flooding. All the states that benefited from the uh, ecological fund uh, government, ecological fund uh, agency mm. uh, relief mm. for flooding, that they should use 10 to 20% of that money to carry out post-impact assessment study in the prone in the flood prone area, mm -hmm. so that we we use that to to plan themselves. Some of the state governments are supposed to have flood management plan, mm. and that is where you'll be able to design and put in place infrastructure that will prevent excessive flooding of the river. Oh, now you know where to dam the river, mm. and like Lago Dam is still going to be released. Onya Dam is still going to be released because we have excess water. Mm. So, and those excess water will come through Onya, that from the Onya Dam will come through Ogo River. And Lagos will be preparing for it. But state governments have complained uh, that um, it's not just the government that has the responsibility, of course, to mitigate this um, flooding, but of course the people also, the communities also have responsibility. They've complained that um, persons go ahead and build on water channels. Where does that... Um, the people now, where do they come in in all of this? And when there is a warning, why is it that they do not heed to these warnings? Is the of the public. One, we now turn natural disaster to man-made with our attitude. 
That's the way I say it. When the city planner said, we have a floodplain area in this, you don't need to go and approach people and say you want to buy land there and build there. And government too, respons the responsibility of government is to see anybody that built on a floodplain, you should destroy, you should, you should demolish it. That's one. Two, the, the habit of throwing waste into the drainage channels. Lagos is so blessed. We have this five natural gorge that was blessed, that was given to Lagos by nat just by nature. The system one to system six or five, yes. But the other is one. They, they are natural. And what, why, why was just, just being kind to Lagos that they have this natural gorge that empties storm water into the lagoon or into the ocean? ocean. And this is what we cannot even keep. Are, you don't even use money to build those gorges or to build those drainage channels. They are there naturally. Mm. The Odoyalaro Canal is about 19 point something kilometer from Agidingbi to, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, Ogudu. Up to, okay. uh, that's where it's empty. Mm. It's a drainage channel. Well, and right. every year you need to be constructing, uh, uh, putting embankment into it so that that river will not overflow right. during this kind of rainy season. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe your dudu are put it there at the time. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much, Ido Salam, for coming on the program. Thank you.